Americans average about seven hours of digital screen exposure every day. Whether that's staring at a laptop or cell phone screen, the consequences are taking a toll on our vision. Scientists believe all this screen time could be fueling a sharp rise in nearsightedness, particularly in children. Based on the trends, half the world's population is expected to be nearsighted by 2050. With more on what's going on is neuro-ophthalmologist Dr. Ronnie Bannock, founder and medical director of Envision Health NYC and author of Beyond Carrots. Welcome, Dr. Ronnie. Thank you so much for having me. So you believe digital eye strain has reached epidemic proportions. What are you actually seeing in your patients that has you so concerned? Yeah, so as you mentioned earlier, we're spending more and more time on screens, both adults and children. And there are certain symptoms that can happen that we call digital eye strain. It's an umbrella term, but it includes trouble focusing, blurry vision on the, on the computer, dry eyes, light sensitivity, sometimes even headaches or migraines or neck strain or, or shoulder aches as well. So uh, definitely there's been a huge rise in digital eye strain in my practice, especially after the pandemic, because many people have been shifted to working even more on screens or doing school from screens, et cetera. So it is an issue. So let's talk about this nearsightedness. What, what is physio physiologically happening to cause this issue? And then we can address things like headaches and, other th and the other items. Sure. So when we look at a screen, the muscles inside our eyes have to focus. So they're constantly working those muscles. We call them muscles of accommodation. And when the muscles are constantly contracting, the eye changes shape. And this happens in younger individuals, particularly young children. The eye actually elongates, it becomes longer. And when the eye becomes longer, that causes myopia, which is nearsightedness. And we think, you know, that we haven't yet proven this, but we think that this is what's happening. The underlying basis of this rising myopia epidemic in the world is this constant demand for near work on screens. And why could this cause other issues? Like, you know, you mentioned, you know, folks sometimes maybe say, they say that they have headaches. Yeah, so the light coming from our screens, um, it has certain wavelengths, particularly the wavelengths that are bothersome to many people are the shorter wavelengths or the blue wavelengths. Mm -hmm. And it can trigger sensors in the back of the eye that may be um, triggering migraine or just regular headaches from being on screen. So people can be light sensitive. They can just feel a discomfort, fatigue uh, from being on, street, on screens. Many people describe eye strain as a symptom, sure. uh, but it's because usually related to the light coming from screens. Another issue is that um, when people are on screens, they're not blinking as much. And simply by not blinking as much, we are, our tears dry out, so our eyes become very, very dry. So that also contributes to digital eye strain. That's interesting. Why wouldn't we blink as much? Yeah, that's a great question. So normally, uh, most people blink about 15 to 20 times per minute. That's a normal blink rate. But when we're looking so intently at a screen, we're only blinking about three to five times a minute. Hmm. And when we don't blink enough, that our eyelids basically, when we blink, they spread the tears over the surface of the eye. They lubricate the eye. So when we're not blinking, those tears evaporate, and that leads to dry eye. Are you seeing, in general, are we seeing more issues with, with, you mentioned children. So, I mean, I've seen, you see infants sometimes now, you know, holding these iPhones, using tablets. Um, are there bigger concerns for children? There may be, you know, the research still isn't quite there yet, but there are some early studies that show that this increased screen time, particularly in the younger years, um, toddlers, young children below the age of five, it may, and I'm saying may, may lead to behavioral issues. But the, again, the research is still under, you know, it, it's it's not quite there in terms of the size of the numbers that of, um, of children who've been studied. All right, so let's talk about solutions. Obviously, screens aren't going away anytime soon. So what do we do to combat these issues? I see I have something I've mentioned about a 20-20-20 rule. Explain that. Yes, yes. So that's my number one go-to tip is follow the 20-20-20 rule, which basically means every 20 minutes, set your timer and take a 20 second break and look at something, not at your screen, but look at something in the distance at least 20 feet away. And that will allow the muscles inside your eyes to relax and relieve a lot of that constant tension that people have in their eyes. It's very effective. 
Um, other things people can do, I mentioned earlier, blinking. So simply by being mindful about blinking, blinking more when you're on a screen, and perhaps interspersing some more forced blinking, like really forceful blinking can get those tears flowing and lubricate the eyes better. Some simple solutions. And I assume you think we should uh, eat well so that we keep our, our eye health promoted as well. Absolutely. I'm a huge advocate of nutrition to support eye health. And there's actually quite a bit of data to show that if you eat the right foods, you can avoid certain eye problems, especially down the road, like macular degeneration, even dry eye. So when it comes to screen time, a lot of people think that they should be getting blue blocking glasses. Um, there's no research to show that blue blocking glasses actually work. But there is research to show that nutrition works, whether you get your nutrition from food or perhaps filling in the gaps using an eye health supplement. And there are specific nutrients you need to look for in a supplement, which include lutein and zeaxanthin. So make sure you're getting those nutrients in your diet from foods like leafy greens, yellow and orange bell peppers, even egg yolk have, has a lot of, of lutein and zeaxanthin. Um, there are so many amazing ways to get your ocular nutrition. And it's not just carrots. A lot of people think, oh, if I just eat enough carrots, won't that take care of my eyesight? Unfortunately, no. We need to do a lot better than just carrots. All right. Dr. Ronnie Bannock, thank you so much for all your advice. We appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks for watching. We've got more great content for you from news to the arts to the environment. So be sure to like and subscribe to WGCU's YouTube channel and follow us on our social media platforms for the stories that matter to you.